This is verse 193 of Surah Al Imran, chapter 3 of the Holy Quran. The translation is Our Lord, whomsoever thou causest to enter the fire, him hast thou surely disgraced, and the wrongdoers shall have no helpers. Our Lord, we have heard a crier calling us to faith, call us, calling us unto faith. Believe ye in your Lord, and we have believed. Our Lord, forgive us therefore our errors. Was we saying the word word is for us, remove us, uh, uh, remove. Uh, sorry, forgive us for us, and remove from us our evils. abrar, and in death number us with the righteous. Our Lord, give us what Thou has promised to us through Thy messengers. The previous messages that is, so all the promises that were made, um, that you had made about us with your previous prophets, fulfill them. And disgrace us not on the day of resurrection. Surely thou breakest not thy promise. Means Allah does not break his promise. I was already saying that previously Azab al Nar has been mentioned and there is no mention of Khizya in that Ma Khalakta Hazabatala Subhana Kafakin Azab al Nar that O our Lord Thou hast not created this in vain, this universe in vain for no purpose. So do not let us be those among those who do not um, understand its aim of creation and we should become and we may so that we may never become the fuel of fire. So after this translation, Hazur is saying that I also said that those people who think that the universe is pointless, this creation is pointless, on them there is a, a punishment in this world as well in the form of uh, um, the punishment of fire in this world in the form of wars and in the in both these meanings this um, uh, verse continues this, chap this meaning forward in the first 
instance, if we think that it refers only to wars on the in the earth in this world, then Rabbana man nar faqad means that when you um, put these people into a fire, the fire of hell, then there is a reason for that. There is re the reason is so that they should their uh, uh, pride and arrogance should be broken and they should become humbled. Be in the fact of the matter is that uh, before a war, the arrogance of uh, a, a people, it is transformed into a humbleness afterwards, and uh, and uh, the greatest of, of their powers, they become humiliated in in uh, power in uh, wars. If you look at the First World War and the Second World War, the 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 Allied troops. Uh, when they when they used to have uh, uh, um, hold prisoners they should treat them with a lot of uh, he, um, to, uh, they used to treat them with a lot of um, dis, uh, degradation and disgrace and the Jap Japanese were uh, really went really far in this the, the way that they disgraced people is very rarely seen in the world but when they used to get hold of the Germans, they were perhaps more, uh, they took perhaps, um, um, took care of the laws, but now um, because the films are in their hands, then we don't we don't know the reality and we don't know how they used to treat the prisoners of war of the Germans. But the Holy Quran is telling us that if this is translated as um, as a war, just as it is it is okay to uh, translate it this way because it's from the Holy Quran's own usage, then we can say that Allah. Um, is telling us that after a war there is humility and um, we were saying that afterwards I will speak about commentators and I, and I will explain how why there is a mention of uh, humi um, humility after a war who's already saying that um, with this I'm just telling you this in an introduction before this we have to going to talk about the, the grammar etc so both of these uh, so, uh, subjects are to do with the punishment of uh, nations via wars and then the punishment uh, in the hereafter in hell so both of these um, subjects go hand in hand Underneath Akhzata, it says, it says Khazia Rajulu, that somebody became humiliated. So from Khazia, Babi Fal is Akhza, which means that someone um, was made to become humiliated. Whether this um, humility is from one's own self or from someone else, in both these uh, cases, the word Khazia is, um, is, can be applied. Huzuri is saying the Aqsa is from Khazayatun, if uh, it's from Fradati Raghib, uh, page 273, I think Huzur said. Um, Huzur is further explaining the Arabic that somebody um, became humiliated or got, got uh, stuck in problems. And then I was reading some more Arabic from these um, dictionaries, and he said he was saying the astahiya or means can also mean being sh being shy and feeling embarrassed. So such uh, humiliating punishment, which makes someone extremely embarrassed, and then he tries to hide his face. So this is the meaning that is included in, in such a punishment. And then al al havanu etc. Huzur is saying, so reading some more Arabic. Huzur is saying, again, it means uh, to repent, to be far away, to be humiliated. Khizyun means that from which, something from which one definitely feels um, shy and um, ashamed, ashamed. <coughs> Some someone uh, to someone to humiliate someone else. This is in Akrab al Mawarid. In Inna ka man dukhl al nara fakad aghzata. Dukhla. Reading some more Arabic. 
Zuri saying, according to Hazrat Imam Razi, there are many um, <coughs> many explanations that from the word Akhzata, uh, I was reading some Arabic from the book. So saying that it says here to Yusanuna, is that correct? Huzur is saying, Huzur is asking, does this mean to be saved from something? To try to protect oneself? And then Malaika to Lazina, whom Hazana to Jahannama, as you're reading some more Arabic, as you're saying, Yusanuna is the same word to be saved. Imam Razi says that this word is an ordinary word. And at some occasions, uh, it has kusuf as well, but this is a normal meaning. That means that everyone has definitely got to go to heaven. As we're saying, the word summa uh, is is used to make it special, make someone special that a, a, so a party of them shall be saved after entering hell. So the word, the translation of this verse that everyone, he's saying that, and he's saying that for every, some people believe that everyone should go to hell after they die. And the Prophet has um, uh, rejected this while uh, commenting on this verse because other verses of the Holy Quran um, bear, um, bear witness against this. The Holy Quran says that they should be keep kept away from that. That is, the good people will be kept away from the fire, that they will not even uh, hear its hasis. Hasis means a very, very um, slight whispery sound, which is like a whisper and about the hell it will be said that it will be uh, it will be full of um, fervor and and um, uh, people will be screaming so people sh if people are kept so far away from them that they cannot even hear the hasis then they know none of the um, effects of the fire shall reach them or the punishment shall reach them so to translate this into this in this way is is uh, goes um, goes against the meaning of this and also against the meaning of the verse which is in surah araf and it is not mentioned it is not proven anywhere in the holy quran that Allah's good people should be put in hell after they die and then they'll be removed from it because these commentators have uh, translated this word, uh, this verse, um, a, wo a word for word and have not really thought about its meaning properly. So this is why they have um, uh, they have this problem. They, th they think that they should be pushed into hell and then taken out and they think that everyone should go and when the people are being taken out, that will be, those will be the special people and the, the Prophet Islam takes the meaning, meaning which is opposite of this, which he, I'll read out and there are other opinions about this as well, which, are, which um, um, Huzur, Huzur would mention probably. Huzur saying that the general subject mentioned here um, is a there is a general meaning, but also special. There is a special subject that all the believers should be put in hell. But those people who are to, to get rewarded, they will be saved from humiliation. So he's saying that there are two types of uh, punishment. One is that of fire, which is to which burns, and another is the humiliation, which is after that for so the one who has been given the fire of hell, they should they are also humiliated. So this detailed discussion that he has taken up is very interesting. They, he says they say that even the angels will be in hell, meaning those angels who are looking after the fire, kindling the fire, etc. And those they will also be saved from the humiliating punishment. 
And he says that for uh, those reading some Arabic, Al Imam Razi says that there are many wise people who are such who have said that this means spiritual punishment. They say that here the fire of um, punishment of fire is is uh, not a physical fire, it's a fire that is rises in the heart after committing a sin and that is more um, painful than a, an apparent uh, fire and that is the fire of Khizya. And Imam Razi says, uh, mentioning others without mentioning their names and he says that according to them the, because the verse uh, is uh, talking about the fire and then the humiliation and this is the spiritual punishment and if the spiritual punishment had been worse then it would not have been mentioned after the physical punishment so they're saying what I have told you he has taken derived different drawn different conclusion he says that uh, older commentators have translated this as meaning that Khizya means refers to spiritual punishment and the first punishment is uh, a that is, is a is a physical punishment and this is why they um, try to explain its order they say that Khizya is the first in the beginning when people are beaten up and put into hell and then after the fire what is the meaning of further humiliation so in order to understand this he is trying to he says that um, the fire of hell is is separate but apart from that the repentance and the uh, feeling of shame will also be a punishment and he says that this he derived this conclusion as his proves that the internal uh, punishment is worse because otherwise Allah would have mentioned this first and then he would have mentioned this uh, the, uh, the other um, punishment so the mention of the punishment afterwards means sorry the mention of Khizya means that this is worse than the is a bigger punishment than that of the fire You were saying this is commentary of Tabri, or you were saying is it Tabri or Tibri? You were saying I used to read it as tib, uh, Tabri. Qala Bazahum, you were reading some Arabic from Tabri. He says that according to some, Rabbana inna ka man tudkhul in Arabi refers to those people who shall live in there forever. That is, those um, sinful people who shall remain there forever. And this is the difference between from those um, believers who, despite being uh, believers, despite being pure, despite being forgiven, they should be put in fire for a little while. So this um, eternal um, s subject that Allah cleanses out those people who are uh, sinners from those who are who will uh, be granted salvation soon this is the, he's saying that this is mentioned here and Anas says that the Holy Prophet said man naru means such people who are in hell permanently Huzur is saying this is this is correct uh, that is uh, for a long long period of time but from that to draw the conclusion that according to the Holy Prophet some people will go for a short while this is completely wrong in fact it's the opposite and um, the opposite is true here only those people are mentioned who will always remain in uh, hell or um, uh, uh, will um, remain there if they're in for a long time so if this is the case then there is no chance there's no possibility of the believers entering into hell the Prophet Islam says with reference to this verse that in this verse there is a long subject is being mentioned 
is being discussed. He's saying this is from Sayyid Ayn Kamarat Islam. He's saying Avani chosen this much that Prophet Prophet says that the even the righteous people are not going to be free of the touch of that fire. And from this, we know that the believers um, in this world, which is the, the, uh, the place of trial, um, they they will uh, they put themselves in that fire by themselves for the sake of Allah. They accept all kinds of hell and they or the fire of hell is uh, raised against them uh, is blazed against them and they are saved from it by their um, by the by the they're saved from that and Allah says and this is what he says is meant that by that everyone shall go into that so they are hurt so much and such terrible earthquakes uh, hit them that apart from them no one has the power to to uh, to um, uh, no one else has the power to bear that so and also when a believer in this world has a punishment and that those things which are ex accidents for other people day-to-day -day accidents for other people for the believers he the Allah um, accounts them as his uh, as his forgiveness so it's a very beautiful method of uh, forgiveness with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu has explained and the Prophet has understood this otherwise we would not have been able to uh, to think about this to understand this he says that if the punishment uh, we, we regard this from being from Allah that he is the one who shall give it, uh, give it to us uh, give us in this world and those, those who have um, those who, and people who make other people make other people make some righteous people enter into heaven sorry into hell um, and then the traditions of the Holy Prophet says says that the day-to-day -day, uh, problems that we that believers face they are regarded as a punishment for them so the promise of the fire is fulfilled in uh, a, in uh, in the form of uh, raising of their body temperature is saying that um, some some people uh, are um, uh, who are ill with cancer etc they come to me and they tell me that they are burning from in from top to toe so in minkum illa duha is means that they that kind of hell is fulfilled for them in this world but those people who are disbelievers about them Allah says that in this world they will also have punishment and the hereafter they'll also have punishment and this punishment um, it doesn't it doesn't compare it doesn't stand in the way of that of that then it says that in another tradition it says that for the believer in this world the uh, heaven, heaven is in the form of hell that means that in the path of Allah they go through so much pain and this see, seems as like a hell for them and they and then and then they find themselves in heaven and other traditions of the Holy Prophet are also uh, present which uh, also show that the believers take a part of the hell uh, fire of hell in this world and the um, uh, disbelievers are put in it forcibly by while the believers put themselves in the in the fire voluntarily and also the uh, believers uh, uh, fall make themselves jump into the fire but they are saved from it quickly and the people who are watching they think that he is involved in a, in severe punishment but allah grants him such peace and such contentment that he is actually enjoying himself in that state which has it Ibrahim al-Islam which is said about Ibrahim al-Islam Ya naru kuni badam wa salaman ala Ibrahim in that it has it is not said it is not mentioned that we did not let him get into the go into the fire this is a very some, you have to be very careful about this Allah said Ya naru kuni badam wa salaman ala Ibrahim that oh fire become cool 
So it has two meanings. One is the ordinary day-to-day -day meaning that the enemies um, kindled the fire, but they could not. It was no use to them, and before it could burn, is Ibrahim. It the fire of uh, transgression opened. Um, Sorry, it was failed. And the other meaning is that whatever problem Abraham had to face, Allah saved him from the punishment of that problem. And every time there was the, the Allah commanded the fire that Ya Narukuni Bartam Salam Allah Ibrahim that become O oh fire become cool for Abraham. So in this world such punishments come uh, uh, are uh, they, and they, even if they are accidents, because people don't do this by themselves, but um, Allah um, removes their their um, uh, sins, the f effect of their sins, by involving them in such illnesses, etc., which and it counts as it, they delete the their uh, sins that they may have committed. And the Muslim Razan who says about this, about the verse that ends in Ansar, as to who Ansar is, it means relatives, friends, etc., that none can help you against Allah. So instead of putting your trust in them, you should put your trust in Allah and you should um, you should uh, have uh, sort out your relationship with Allah. Now he's only saying that I'm going to return to this verse. In this one verse, one meaning Huzur said I've already explained to you that those people who in this world they are involved in the fire of harb that is war I have mentioned them bef uh, about them before they Huzur said these these have uh, have um, um, a relationship with each other so those people who um, those people who have the fire have the war they th themselves. Um, they, 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 it enables them to break their arrogance and this breaking of arrogance is proven from the Holy Quran very certainly and as a result of that their characters become, uh, their personalities become ready to accept Islam and this is the same subject which is mentioned in Surah Taha that they will be broken and they will be crushed to smithereens and they will be leveled that you shall not see in them any heights or any any highs or any lows and now is the time for them that they are able to accept the caller in whom there is no crookedness so it, it is very clear that this um, Allah is mentioning the uh, punishment of wars in this world and then from these wars they become humiliated and they become and their arrogance are broken and they become less and less and this is the style that is now prevalent in the earth is continuous and what was the way um, some countries are treated before um, after a war, they, it would, they would not have been treated like that before the war. Because we were saying it doesn't have, it's, it's not that it doesn't have anything to do with one's uh, own uh, desires, one's own inclination. A person who remain uh, wealthy for a long time, they cannot care about, um, they cannot care about the the feelings of the poor and those people who are ruling for a long time. They do not know what it's like to be ruled. And when they become, uh, when they are ruled, and then then they discover what freedom is, and then they also think about those poor um, countries who are devoid of freedom for a long time, and then Allah gives them um, a, a, a gives them the a, a capacity to uh, to attain salvation. Who is saying that they should be careful? I try to understand this that the word batil here. Allah is is beyond batil, that is uh, falsehood, and this is why Allah is uh, says that remember none of my my uh, actions are batil, are false. No matter how much you study the universe, you will not find any of it being falsely made or for no, for without purpose. So these things are also without um, without uh, any purpose. So we're saying the khizi, punishments of khizi. 
which are after the fire of hell, they are there to fulfill a purpose. And in this world, that purpose eventually um, it, it results in changing of the circumstances. And such people who uh, make themselves set, sit upon ivory towers, it um, results in their reformation and it results in reformation of their point of view. And this is possible only through khizya, until they have a feeling of humiliation. They, it's not possible that they can, they can have sympathy for poor people's feelings. They cannot understand what those people are going through. So their character is changed slowly. And this changing in character in this, uh, in this century, it's, it, it appears very clear the people uh, in before the 40s, there were uh, uh, some different cir uh, circumstances, and so also um, before and after the Second World War, and at the end of 1944, it was a different situation. Huzur saying perhaps the Third World War um, will result in them, um, th their arrogance is being broken and them being leveled, and to think that they will all be destroyed, this is wrong. They will have to be. Uh, they they will have to remain, and, and then they will be able to believe in the a prophet who was um, who is liable, who doesn't have any crookedness. So it is wrong to think that they the wars will complete, completely destroy them. The Allah is only saying that the arrogance will be broken, and if they enter Islam with humility, then it is it may well be that after Islam, they enter into Islam, they should still remain. Um, uh, respectful because then their um, way of um, their character of uh, attaining progress will remain within Islam as well in order to understand this subject this uh, statement of the Holy Prophet uh, said uh, is, is helps us to understand it the pro when he says that the people who are in the ignorant era they were great they should be great after Islam as well so it means that with regards to the greatness, the, uh, those people who had incredible um, qualities, they will be when they become Muslims. They will become, they will their qualities will be polished even further, and they will not be broken. Their this will result in the acceptance of Islam will result in in, in a greatness in their character, in their um, pers personalities. Look at the, the Umar Zanho. Look at what kind of how arrogant he was and how he used to walk around haughtily in uh, the streets. And when he accepted the, the khizya, the hum, uh, humiliation by himself, then that increased his status rather than reducing it and made it a permanent state. And the same was the state of the Abu Bakr Zanho and also of other uh, companions such as Ali Zanho, etc. Many other companions who, for the sake of Islam, they accepted humiliation, but and but that humiliation was wasn't pointless. It was it was experienced by them in order that their status shall shall um, uh, go shall go high. So those people who have such qualities that they can go high, then if they accept Islam, then their um, their capacities won't capabilities won't fall, and their um, qualities will be kept. Uh, the standards of them will be kept high. So these Huzur is saying that here you, you should the people who are called the third world countries. It, there is not there is no sadness here for them. They should are told that you should you should try to adopt the the a good character that these people have other, uh, otherwise they will still be uh, a high they'll still be on a high status at the after they accept Islam so you have a right now you have a preference over them because you uh, are you enjoy faith but when they accept faith then if you don't accept uh, take adopt their um, uh, worldly greatnesses then they will again attain worldly greatness so any humility that is given in this world is not pointless and the other aspect is that on the on the day of judgment after um, the uh, after the punishment akhzata is mentioned if you think it refers to the hereafter then man nahara faqad akhzata wa mal zalimin min ansar then all of the wars that 
uh, have been mentioned in all of these in all of these uh, battles most of the people most of the parties are uh, transgressors but despite this allah makes a fine distinction between them there are some who are the first to make those wars and in reality the those wars are be, are begun uh, start as a result of their cruel acts and such people are not helped and in comparison com in confrontation with them even if there are uh, criminals and they're not uh, pure and uh, good people then sometimes the decisions are uh, are not made in this way it the um, the <coughs> A, um, a, a scales don't look at um, uh, who, who that it, it should make um, it should um, which way it should bow it looks at which how much things weigh so here the word as in in terms of what it, how it applies to the world that it refers to those cruel people who are more cruel compared to others for them there will be no helper that is that they will eventually um, hu be humiliated and defeated so the humili the humility is for both of them um, but it also will have some um, but those um, th that humiliation shall be a good thing for them and in the kamatut khilnar faqad akhzata and oh allah those who you have um, put in fire then faqad akhzata here the faqad means that this is not a decision made then it is a decision made before that so the qad is mentioned before um, the before what had happened so it, it means that you have already humiliated them so you saying that I'm, i don't agree with this that after the fire again they should be it should be that there will be another punishment the punishment the state of the fire is mentioned that their um, being uh, humiliated is the fire which in which they will be uh, they will be involved Huzur Singh and, and I mentioned another group of people as well who have a slightly different um, statement. But those people who call this um, a spiritual punishment, they were, they were some commentators like that in the previous eras. So if we don't have any um, physical body in the hereafter, then it, the, the punishment cannot be, the fire cannot be physical and the, we have to regard that punishment as a physical punishment so that he would take such a, 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 a situation. So, so he's already saying that the, this being, this, this um, spiritual punishment transferring into <clears throat> a physical punishment is uh, is uh, seen in the, a very exquisite um, ma uh, manner that the Prophet ﷺ has shed light on this, and this is only he is the only one who has um, who has done this, and you do not find uh, this discussed in any of the older commentators as to when someone dies, then from the soul another soul is born, and the previous soul which is is um, exquisite in comparison to the body he's already saying that just as i said that um, the, the the ones who transgress more or who have who have become or who, have, who are the first to transgress they are punished in the same way the there is comparative um, status status of uh, the souls Huzuri saying that the one which is in our, the body, the soul which is in us, we we call it, we call all its experiences as spiritual experiences, and it's true that that shall be uh, be punished. But the from Sallallahu said that that soul shall be made the body of another soul, and after going through a long um, evolutionary phase, a new creation will be made, and the waiting until the to the day of judgment is for precisely this method that that a very fine um, creation which is uh, which is turning into a, a, a status when he goes through his own evolutionary stages then he will be ex um, uh, capable of being raised and this 
um, soul will take, will become like a body, but it will be a body about which Allah says in the Holy Quran that you cannot understand it, you cannot even imagine it as to how Allah shall raise us, but as far as a comparative um, study is concerned, the prom- Allah gave the Holy Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this light, this enlightenment that although it will be a soul, but in the comparison to that, it will be like a body in a way, and the, bo- the soul that we have in t- within us now is a totally different different than our body, but so we think that body would be different than our body, but their, uh, body, their uh, punishment of their body, their punishment should become their bodily punish, physical punishment, and it would feel as if the body is burning, and this is how they, they'll think that it's like a fire, and that soul shall be hurt who has which has been born out of that uh, that uh, soul so this is a subject in Qad al-Khazayta that Allah had already humiliated them that means that oh Allah those whom you put into hell we have already ex- um, decided the humiliation for their sake and whoever and for whomsoever you make such a decision and no one can save them and the other translation is that that <clears throat> fire is that of humiliation which shall be uh, which shall be kindled and it will fall upon them as in the form of extremely dangerous punishment and is they shall have no the transgressors shall have no helpers the promise islam has said discussed about transgressors this verse and but Huzuri is saying that it is uh, it will take us away from the subject that that is the word as zalim that is transgressors it um, refers to such transgressors who are who transgress in evil deeds and here the alif and lam is for uh, is um, separating those people that there are some zalimin or some transgressors who transgress against their own selves in good deeds in it's another verse of the Holy Quran. This um, example is given by the, by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some other verses. Uh, he gives a t- uh, reference of and he said that sometimes the same word is used to give contradictory meanings and in both terms the meanings reach their zenith. So the transgressors are those who um, who act against their own uh, aims and although they are transgressing against others but in reality they are transgressing transgressing against their own selves and then there are those who transgress against their own selves in such a way that then Allah showers his blessing on him and his and his uh, transgression that person's transgression results in mercy and those are good people, though those are pious people and they have been called transgressors because they take their goodness to a, 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 a zenith and th- those people who jump into the fire themselves, that is that they uh, commit suicide in a way, but because they do this for the sake of Allah, then Allah does not let uh, this um, uh, Allah does, does not let them uh, see any evil of this action. Allah cools the fire and grants them reward for this um, trans- transgression they commit against themselves. Imane, O our Lord, we have heard the the caller, the call. The uh, we're saying that the Munadiyan it means it refers to one caller, but here. In order to express greatness, there is a singular, that is a great, a very great caller, such a great caller on which, uh, that on his name we do not use to put a one um, alif and lam. Uh, Zuri is saying that, for example, when you say that a township among townships, so it says just here, just a town or a, a thing, so sometimes something is so great that to make it uh, to make it sound special makes it makes its uh, honor less as if there are others as well similar to it because the, the, his glory had no there is no doubt in his glory and there is none s- such like him so such a we 
listen to the caller of the call of such a crier who was who such a caller who was crying who was calling towards faith who was really saying that um, the discussion of the dictionary meanings of words and who commented and said about this i shall um, discuss that with you now what what has the word manadi um, emanated from usually we say nida means the call but its core does not come from the word call nida is um, means damp nadal earth the damp of the earth and from that the word nida has has been derived and also munadi etc i derived so wetness and uh, dampness and um, Uh, and such dampness are also and sh- there is other words um, which are m- meanings uh, similar meanings which are given by tajul urus etc and ibn faris has said that its meaning main meaning is to uh, to combine something and it also means dampness whereas in the word dampness there is the word of uh, combining because when soil gets dry then it becomes warm and bassa that means that it turns into dust and it uh, it um, scatters and it's the wetness that combines it therefore in the word nada there is a the meaning of to gather and to collect but the word um, the damp the meaning of damp is included in it is not a separate meaning this um, has uh, been mentioned by taj and um, and some others with the same uh, by quoting the same reference by calling someone it uh, it means that to collect people in a place and talk to them and nadaw munadat it there is a word in here which is nadwa and which is a gathering and anudwa is a people who are collected gathered together there is a place called darunadwa in india and at the time of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was a darunadwa in um, arabia of the quraish of mecca so the darun the subject of darunadwa uh, actually refers to gathering together and allah says in the holy quran nadwa is of two forms one is that which is made for the purpose of uh, mischief mongering and the other nadwa is for goodness and piousness so here the munadi yunadi when we discuss these words we shall we shall we shall have to discuss which type of nada is mentioned nadwa means to gather but if by gathering together people talk uh, in um, about um, divisions and creating disorder then this is a dishonor of the word nadwa and this nadwa means to combine together for the sake of uh, pious deeds which in actual effect combines man to man and the holy quran makes it, makes it very c- clear in the uh, under the meaning of the word najwa darun in darun najwa the najwa was really saying that i kept saying nadwa whereas i meant najwa and suddenly i remembered that that word is najwa but the actually actually it is um, uh, in that place there used to be najwas against the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it was completely the um, that action the action was completely the opposite of the word najwa the holy quran says that najwa is that which calls people towards good which means to call people towards good so nadi nadi means that um, call that calling uh, towards people which has the meaning of the damp uh, soil which has the power of nourishment which does which is not found in dry soil so the calling is actually adam ke sath wa um reminds one of um, that of the of the memory of adam and when I, allah created adam then uh, satan said that you have made him out of wet clay and you have made me out of fire and i have been granted ascendancy over it because a, a fire can burn uh, <coughs> burn uh, dust allah did not give any proof to pro- to prove him uh, wrong Allah, uh, 
said that the, those things which destroy are not the ones which uh, which uh, are given ascendancy the, and the ascendancy was given to the wet clay it was a wet clay that is given as ascendancy now it was the uh, fire from which the from which um, despite which um, Allah created life from wet clay and the fire could not uh, uh, destroy the clay and now the clay the man he uh, he is master of the, over the fire he has made a fire uh, driven rails and cars and aeroplanes all of these are proofs of the ascendancy or the victory of uh, wet clay over fire so any claim of the, of the Satan or, or of anyone else who has been told something it is it is completely wrong now the question is that wh where did the word Nada Nadi come from who is saying that here the word Munadi refers to according to the people who uh, who uh, write commentaries they take it to mean two to have two mean meanings one is that it refers to the holy prophet sallallahu and there are some who think it refers to the holy quran do you think i shall return to this later at the moment i wish to tell you that as far as i'm i think uh, i think that it has all the meanings of nida included in it and it means that such a person who calls who has the power to combine people to collect together to collect people together and his gathering people is to do with uh, your nourishment and if you re respond to him then there will be a, um, a progress um, a whole vista of progress shall shall arise and it shall be it should look it should look like it would look like um, uh, trees sprouting leaves and life forming and so Huzuri said this is what I think it means therefore Huzuri is saying that all of these um, words of these books they refer to Sharadun Nadyanun that's such verdant leaves which are um, verdant trees which are full of um, uh, fruits as well so this meaning is also included in the word Munadi that it is such a uh, such trees which bear fruit and also it refers to calling because the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Nida was um, he this meaning is also included in his calling because the person who calls from uh, with his uh, tongue is also called Munadi and one with his message is also called Munadi Huzur is saying that this um, uh, argument is the same argument again but now Huzur is saying that I wish to refer to a um, verse of the Prophet Islam where which um, enabled me to believe this word so sorry to understand what this word means it is uh, some uh, verses in the praise of the, the of Allah which also changes it into the praise of the Holy Prophet who is reading the Arabic of the verse verses the Prophet says that I will die but my love shall never die and with your remembrance my the call of my 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 dust shall shall call and it will it will cry it will it will call out that it is your remembrance is a source of life for me so this is the best application of this um, of this uh, meaning that in love there is a a, a um, uh, a rejuvenation so my apparent dust will become will call out because it will have the dampness of love in it so who saying it's a beautiful rendering of the word nida who's saying that i love that um, verse those verses anyway but now i love them even more after knowing what this these these meanings uh, after understanding these meanings the next discussion of the words is that of sayya asu kullu my humble insana so refers to that a thing which um, uh, grieves people whether it is in some worldly matters or in religious matters either in um, the worldly matters or in the um, 
So he's reading some Arabic now. He was wondering if the word is Hasib or Hamim. He was saying it must be Hamim, which refers to a close friend who is extremely close. He's called Hamim. It means he's a very warm friend, a very deep friend. So, in whose um, in whose <coughs> uh, friendship uh, there is a sacrifice, so it means that everything which grants one salvation from grief, whether whether they are uh, worldly matters or uh, matters of the thereafter, whether they have to do with um, with um, the in spiritual uh, uh, emotional affairs or others, or whether to do with um, gaining of wealth or loss of wealth, or some close relative, or uh, at the death of some close relative or friend. So, um, so these are all definitions of sayya. So everything which one does not like one dislikes every event which or that painful matter which um, one one but one does not like is called sayya but this meaning is not correct from this point of view that the holy quran has used the word sayya in such meanings as well that it as if it is something which the heart desires but it is something which is uh, which is evil which is false and harmful and it eventually uh, results in extreme hardship and harm so there are these are such certain evils which we do not even understand and they are hidden inside us and we just enjoy their pleasure so to limit sayya just to those things which uh, pains people is wrong every evil which whether we feel it or not which are against one's higher aims which are uh, which negate those aims those are called sayya which which um, nullify those our greater aims is called sayya and then qasb sayya is mentioned in the holy quran is saying look at how it's mentioned bala man qasab sayyatan lima tastajiruna bis sayya that verily those who gain uh, or earn um, uh, evil they shall be punished and then the holy quran says that why are you in such a hurry over earning evil and sin why do you want to go rush towards the uh, evil quickly if it is something that you dislike then this what is this verse of the holy quran then means obviously in terms of its meaning and in terms of its um, core of its meaning everything which is disliked and which is eventually against our higher aims the holy quran is called calls it sayya whether we realize it that realize what that um, thing is doing to us or not then sayya refers to that which definitely harms people and sayyas uh, and it is it emanates from man it does not come from god it emanates from within people whatever good that you are gaining anything good then remember that it comes from Allah and whatever evil um, involves you into some some something um, something uh, bad and evil then that is that emanates from your own selves reading from the commentaries in Arabic Huzur is saying that Hasan uh, and are two are, have to do with two types of things Zarab is um, is when someone get, gets injured but it is also used in other meanings to give an example for instance man ja bil hasanati fa lahu ashram thaliha wa man ja wa man ja fi sayyati fa man 
sorry, I misread the verse. Bazuri is saying that whoever does something good, whoever does a, a pious act, then he shall get a ten times more, and the one who does something performs an evil, he will not be given more than the equal, that is the punishment. And the other type of Hasanatun wa Sayyatun, also reading some Arabic. As, uh, Hasana and Tayyiba, they are, um, they are, they have a different effect on one's, um, one's um, uh, understanding and one's feeling. That is, Azur is saying this is the same thing I've been mentioning before as well. That Hasana are two of two types. Sometimes one regards something as good, which is not good. Sometimes we like something which is evil, but it's actually evil for us, and and it definitely has a an evil end. But the other type of sayya refers to sin and refers to evil, and that people do by by myth, without thinking about it. But it must refer only to uh, evil, and the punishment of that should be given. And in this um, discussion. The word zanub has also been discussed as to what the, the relationship between the word zanub is to this because the word, the prayer in this verse says, Rabbana faghfir lana zanubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina wa tawaffana ma'al abrar. And he says that sayya, what is sayya here? And what are the zanub? And what is the relationship between the two words? Wa qila zanubu tarku taati. Wasayyatu fil maasi. Zunub is to withdraw from obedience, and sayya is to uh, commit an evil deed. Huzur saying, I don't agree with this division. This is an artificial division. In uh, the fact of the matter is that this is wrong, uh, wrong to divide this in this way because zunub are refers to all of man's weakness weaknesses they can apply to them that means that even a prophet of god uh, is, uh, seeks forgiveness from zunub and there the word zump means such uh, physical weaknesses which um, are sometimes called um, sorry as far as prophets are concerned, when the prophets look at them from their own greatness, they point of view their own greatness, they think it's an evil thing, and and their um, uh, actions, etc., they are they are analyzed in such a way that an ordinary person can never reach to them, reach them. An example of this uh, can be ascertained from a um, incident that occurred in the life of the Holy uh, of the Prophet Islam, which has to do with the Khalifa of the Abul who said that I'm um, informing you of the statuses on the one hand the great goodness that is being uh, mentioned if you look at it from another point of view it appears to be Zamb and it is possible and this is a great example and it sheds light on this entire subject. So the Khalifa Masih Awal Zanhu once was um, sent a message from the Prophet of Islam and he said to him that uh, you, it is better that you should now declare that you are from the Hanafi and you are not a Hadith, for someone from the Hadith a sect of Islam. Khalifa Awal Zanhu who was a, an embodiment of love and obedience and uh, when he uh, uh, when he heard this, he wrote a poetry. Uh, um, he wrote wrote a um, a verse and sent it, which means as that is in Persian that if um, your um, um, if if your if even he tells you to uh, soak your janimas your uh, prayer mat into a wine, then you should do it because the person who is uh, who is asking is not uh, doesn't is is not unknown to him. It is not unknown 
and Zul says that when an ordinary person reads this, they um, say, wow, how great the first Khalifa was, but the promise, when the Promised Islam was on such high status of um, greatness, he saw this as a zam, he called him and he said that what is the um, belief of the Hanafi sect, is it not that the Quran is the best and then uh, this, that is the tradition of the Holy Prophet وسلم, which shed light on those verses, then those are to be relied upon and then if that's not the case then one will Azur is saying that I don't remember exactly but this it is the subject is similar to this Khalil Masih Awazan who said that I, the Muhammad Islam must have suggested or he might have said yes or he may have said it himself that this was the, the belief then he said that from Muhammad Islam said that what is your belief then is this not your belief? Khalil Masih Awazan who bowed his head down and he was extremely embarrassed when he returned he meant that I want to see you as a truthful person Iman al-Ajayz is also a status to achieve but the truthfulness demands that you should you should not accept uh, what I, uh, your Imam is saying that although I think it's wrong but it might be true this is not to glorify your Imam you should everything that he does is good and if you do not look at it from this point of view then you cannot attain the status of uh, purity and um, on truthfulness so what, a, what a, an exquisite subject this is which shows the uh, relationships and the ratios of zamb and sayya so to, to, to just simplify it and say that it just means a lack of uh, obedience it is wrong every uh, deed which is slightly less than the expectation of Allah of us that turns into zamb and for ordinary uh, people that turns into a great good deed so when the, the uh, prophets they seek forgiveness they don't do so because of their sins they do so because of the expectations um, that are um, bind are bound with their great status because they worry that that they might they may do may do something which may make them fall from their high highest their very high status so um, this Huzuri is saying that this refers to such things which whether we can see them or not but they are there and they are often they continue in our actions and one cannot feel it that is why Allah says wa billah min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyi'ati amalina here the word shuroor is um, replaces zamb and sayyi'ati amal means such um, habits natural habits which are born out of zamb but they become our second nature and they permanently um, bind with man and it is to save ourselves from such evils so here the word sayya is as, saying, as, as far as i'm concerned this is this is the relationship with it with, with zayya say, say, and zamb and the meaning that of sayya that are mentioned in the holy quran in different verses the different um, the different aspects of that is saying I wish to explain to you now for example saa means something to be painful saa sabila is a style which is evil which is uh, wrong in an ordinary uh, understanding and it has to do with the um, that uh, a certain action will have an evil result that this act that they do this will not be without a result it will definitely result in an evil end and then to uh, give someone pain or to disrespect or dishonor someone is also a meaning combined and um, found in this was saying that why do this says it should it not be less Yesua here or Lesua, I'm not sure who's saying that you should be careful of what um, you write here who's saying that 
it will be layasu a wujuhakum so that and he should he so that he should damage your faces your countenances and he should hurt them or he should um, make them uh, humiliated wujuhakum refers to faces and it doesn't refer to the face the, fa- the actual face it means every kind of evil um, news which affects people's faces we definitely affect people's faces so it doesn't mention about the um, pains but all those things the different types of pains but it says that such pain which creates a, um, the look of a hurt on, on a face that is found in the words um, su and waju also means the um, the leader so when um, the out the foreign powers gain gain uh, ascendancy then they destroy their great people and this is what the queen of sheba said that when the kings enter into a different country they um, they dishonor their great people so the 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 great people were had become devoid of um, of leading and this is why allah called someone who was a foreign foreign powers so that your great people who had become your great people they should become they should be turned into lowly people and this is the meaning of yesu it can also refer to a great harm a great revolutionary uh, damage and also refers to punishment because here the word this word although it is not it refers to those people who will enter but is a it is a scenario painted before us of a punishment from allah so that so which is born out of our of somebody's own action sometimes allah um, applies it to you as a result of some actions so that you understand what the reality of your actions was see a sua walamma ja'at rusuluna lutan see abihim this is mentioned in the holy quran about lot it says that when the angels came to him with the news of the impending uh, uh, disaster uh, and they were told that they were evil people and although they were extremely harmful and damage they they were um, they used to hurt him they is a see abi him he didn't like it so he has it has he had in fact on his face but it um it hurt him but it doesn't refer refer to any evil deed so this word can be used for prophets but then it would only be in the form of um, some um hurt that's been caused to them and not in the in the meanings of uh, of uh, any sin that they committed we have been told something as you now saying yes you oh, we have said you're saying what is the grammar of this then yes you it could be yes you oh, who's who said you're saying it is the only thing that's possible that in the yes you oh, the last wow has uh, fallen and this is yesu which is which remains it can't be yesu a it must in com- in um, combination you think this is how it should be this is how the grammar is correct so it's not it's not yesu a is yesu o actually it was yesu u and when it was um, uh, pluralized then it changed slightly if there was no vow here then this there would have been this nasab on it but because on whoever had this this had to be sorry whatever of the word this is left behind that is all that is mentioned suan is evil when creates evil etc that means when i'm yourself come so and nothing that would hurt them shall even get uh, uh, touch them huzur is giving other verses of the holy quran huzur saying all of these uh, meanings i have already discussed al maida le yore hu ka fi yawari so at akhi in this 
Badawi has translated is it as meaning a dead body, but this is not right. Lewari so at means the state of well of a, of a person who is dying. It is a painful um, thing. So the, the one who writes his uh, his fault uh, because he doesn't like doesn't like it. So Huzur saying that we can't say that he he is uh, dead. You can you can only say sorry, and then Huzur is reading some other verse of the Holy Quran. The translation of this Huzur saying that some people have. Um, some people has, you have mentioned their internal organs and said that they, they should be, um, it is done to hide them so that to stop them from being revealed, although this is not the case in, within them, the capabilities of certain weaknesses, they became evident and came out and this is why the Quran um, mentions this, that the, their hidden, concealed evil deeds, they came out into the open. And this there is another subject as well that it is actually once uh, evil is hidden within us. So in Shuru and Fusina, we say, Yat is, uh, is, is included in this. Nusi is a person who commits evil deeds. He was reading some more words. As far as the commentary is concerned, he's saying that Imam Razi says, one of the things Imam Razi says is that there are two opinions. One is the word Munadi, with uh, turning the word Munadi towards the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahaduhuma and Muhammad and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who call Aksarina, this is what majority of people think. But the Lilo, uh, sorry, Huzur is reading uh, some Arabic. That is when in the Holy Quran, Allah uh, <coughs> instructs the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to call people towards Allah. That is, he acts, he is calling the whole world because of what Allah has told him, and he is calling them with such great signs like which are like the sun. He is, he is the son of the truth and he is calling towards pure goodness and pure truth uh, despite giving such a great and um, powerful meaning Allah Razi prefers another meaning which means that he thinks that it refers to the Holy Quran and not the Holy Prophet and his proof was saying that um, the proof that he gives the in brief it is that the Holy Quran is calling even today and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has uh, passed away therefore the word Yunadi is continuous subject is it cannot be uh, co correct um, the continuous meaning of it cannot be correct because of the demise of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying this is not correct if you should you consider that the Quran was granted to the Holy Prophet وسلم, and when it came out of the blessed mouth of the Holy Prophet وسلم, then those words of Allah became the words of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and those are the words that have the permanence and the eternity and uh, the Prophet وسلم, has got a revelation in the, uh, of which is which means something similar, but people criticize against it. But the fact of the matter is that sometimes what people say, they become, they are those words that Allah wishes to say. Hazur has given an example in Arabic that 
um, when it says in the Holy Quran that he does not, the words from the Holy Prophet's mouth are his, but the subject or whatever he's been taught is Allah is Allah's words. So the Quran is speaking the Holy Prophet's words because the Quran was revealed to the Holy Prophet. The, um, it didn't directly come down. The Quran did not directly come down. So the one, the caller is. Um, the Holy Prophet وسلم, number one and the Quran has become the vehicle for uh, for uh, this uh, uh, for the conveying of this so we say that sometimes sale are um, says something um, says some some intelligent stuff when he says here that it refers to Muhammad with the Quran that Muhammad in whose hand is the Quran he is the Munadi he is the caller so the Quran in itself is not a caller the Quran is um, has been <coughs> uh, spoken by the mouth of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and that is how it has become the call and the words of sale are namely Muhammad with the, with the Quran so this is uh, I agree with him and I think he's true when he said this and there's another discussion as well that uh, what is the meaning of um, having Manadi and Yunadi combining them together Zuri saying that look at our um, scholars they have really gone into fine details sometimes in, in such um, fi- they've gone into such fine details they have lost the view of the of the uh, of the whole uh, of the whole meaning and this is uh, very important to read it with this kind of point of view and one of the reasons of the of the advent of the whole promise islam that the quran should not just be read with the with the um, meaning of a uh, from the meaning of a uh, a bumblebee it should be uh, looked at from far away and both of these is um, the Quran is teaching the believers that you should look at us from uh, from a faraway point of view and also from what's within you. So these commentators who have worked very hard, a majority of them, um, they are do not appear to sorry they do appear to look at the Holy Quran in a very fine detail otherwise no, such a person would they would not be able to understand it in such a, f- a fine detail but so they are the ones who say that what was the point of saying Yunadi <coughs> Munadi and Yunadi why the two words Zuhur is saying that let me uh, explain to you this discussion with reference to Tafsir Kabir Razi I think Zuhur said Zakaran Nidda Mutlaqan Thumma Muqayyidan Bil Imani Tafheeman Bishani Munad Bishani Munadi Sorry, the Zul reading the rest of the Arabic. They say, they say that the word by combining Munadi and Yunadi the reason what Allah wanted to mention that the caller is mentioned the call is mentioned and also to show the greatness of the caller it has been combined with uh, with the the faith which means that the caller calls towards faith and not about anything else in this prayer he asks Allah for three things praise to Allah for three things Ghufran, Zinub and Sayyat Allama Zamishkhari reference is given in Tafsir al-Qasimi that Zamishri says was only saying that this should have been trick taken from the original the reference upon reference if if um, if you take the actual um, it's better to take this kind of meaning so wherever al kashaf is mentioned the, they should uh, show me the real the actual reference if someone says that al munadi and yunadi by what is the purpose of the combining this then i shall say that first 
there was by combining these together uh, the remembrance of manadi is is made great because there is no manadi who can be more than um, more than that so Huzur is saying that all of the um, commentators um, they have this is the reason that they they uh, have described Huzur saying that the rest is a combination or is a discussion of Zunub and Sayyad. All the commentators are discussing that. Huzur saying on the last um, discussions is. Um, that O oh Allah enable us to die among the good people and this means according to some commentators that just as it says Anama Shafi fi Hazin that I am oh, going to be with me um, so it means that whatever his point of view is is what my point of view is as well so Mal Abrar would then mean that I should be uh, I should die at a time in the form of a good person where I have the same I should be like just like the good people so I should be among the the pious people so this is more this has more deep meanings than just merely to say the right is among the good people to write someone among the good people would mean that even though I have faults but Still, you should consider me to be good, but um, to be to, to combine us with the good people means, according, according to these uh, these ulama, uh, it will strengthen the subject further if um, that um, their uh, paths of goodness should become my paths of goodness, and there should be a complete unison in this. And this is, and they say that this they derive this meaning from Inni Ma Shafi that in this I am with Shafi. One says this when completely and entirely one adopt that point of view, and if there is a uh, point of view which is um, which says that let us die among those people. Uh, sorry, when we, let us die when we are like those people whom you regard as being. Uh, good and pious. This is also combined with the verse which refers to, sorry, which is uh, is the verse which says, Imam mm-hmm. Shafi says it's the same subject which is um, mentioned there in the words, mm-hmm. that is, it doesn't mean that wherever there is a munim uh, sitting let us sit with them it means that our point our style our manner our um, uh, style of life should become 100 percent like those people completely and utterly like those people who are good and of such stages among such stages we should definitely be among at least among one of them because you cannot attain each and every one of those stages because they include in the bean, so the king, so the cow, that is the prophets and the reformers, etc. So the word ma is also explained here in this way. Then the argument is taken up as to why the word fakhfirlana is afterwards, he is used to mention after because fa means fa refers to a um, result of something because. If we believe, then why should we be forgiven? Because we are not haven't mentioned anything about seeking forgiveness, and we are it is as if we want the reward of a of just mere belief. That if we believe, then they give us this reward, and then after that, another there is another subject to be discussed. Fakhfilana zunubana, Rabbana fakhfilana zunubana wa kafir arina sayyatina. That if the evil, sorry the. Um, if they are, if the, uh, the <coughs> commit the, so first, why is the, does the Quran mention that we should get, be saved from sin and, uh, sorry, first we ask for forgiveness and then we say that we should be saved from sin, why is that this order? 
and then the final um, result is Mal Abrar, who's already saying that shall I should we take this up tomorrow or should we do it today? He's already saying, I think let us finish this subject now. Let us try to finish it. He's already saying that let me now um, explain to you word for word the commentators have said what the commentators have said and what they have said in combination. What they're um, he's saying, I have already informed you of what they're. What they what they say, and he was saying that perhaps I have uh, mentioned this in other in Friday sermons that here a great um, words uh, subject is being being mentioned, which has a relationship with the verses before this, and this is how we should consider it, which is that those people who do not regard the universe as being false among them are those who. Um, among from them are born the prophets and then they are the ones who who reach God and then Allah chooses those people to spread his message and the prophethood will not you will not see um, among anyone else except such people and the final um, uh, intelligent people who are mentioned here are those um, the, the highest ones are the prophets and this is uh, the is included in the word Munadian and this and this and also it is those people who accept the call they are those who do not regard the universe as being false and when they consider it they um, the, it causes them to remember Allah more and then such people can never deny a caller because they have already searching for their Lord because before um, the reaching stage of prophets if there are such people who um, who um, consider the the creation of the heavens and who remember Allah and those are the people who then respond to the call of a prophet so with with Yunadi there is um, Yunadi Lil Imani that means that despite the fact that you are in the universe and you view the uh, proofs of the existence of God but those are through a um, a vehicle it is a reflection it is a picture it is not actually God so the universe is separate and God is separate in the, uh, the universe you see pictures but this is not s sufficient to um, lead you to God there is a must the, the, you have to have the vehicle of someone who had already me, met Allah and he should be someone who shows you the path from the inside he should see the path on the inside and then calls you and tells you that yes come inside and I will show you the path because I have seen it and those people who uh, those people can undertake this journey who are Ulul al Bab or the intelligent ones and there are two things we are saying this is a very fine subject very exquisite subject of the Holy Quran that it includes those people who uh, cons who reflect after they believe and also uh, consider uh, those people it refers to those people who start to cons reflect and then they become potential believers and so from this point of view the first state that is mentioned is their potential um, state that is of those people who have not yet believed but they are traveling towards belief but the others are those people who have believed and they have a caller within them their um, state of mind is um, sh is displayed in a better way so they have started walking upon this path and this is their state of mind so if they consider with the love of Allah and with righteousness then even if they do not have the faith then um, they, they grant people the capacity to respond to the caller and if he is a believer then it is as if there is um, this is a polishing of the of the gold then his remembrance uh, his his sitting and standing and laying down everything revolves around the remembrance of Allah and the result of both is the same one is those people who say that the universe is not false 
who have not yet called, uh, sorry, uh, reached the caller, that is that they are um, engrossed in the in the creation, in the incredible creation of Allah, but they are like an outsider. They have an outsider's point of view, and then there are those people who have attained the caller when they say that they um, the universe is not false. They say it with a great glory because in that they have experienced it for themselves. They have they see they have seen Allah, but they have. And they have established a relationship through him, with him through a caller, and this turns into a person relationship afterwards. So after that, when it's said, "Yunadil Imani," then some people could say that um, the believers are mentioned before this as well. Then, what is the meaning of believing after they have believed? So the Holy Quran has mentioned this very clearly that there are stages in Islam, and in spite of that. People are divided towards Islam and this, the states of um, faith if after Allah accepts them. Then after that, then there are those people who again believe. So these are this is the subject of the different stages and statuses of faith. So although there are so many such people who when they see Allah in the universe, they believe Allah and they uh, talk of love, but those which there is a one kind of um, faith which is given, which is granted through obedience and towards uh, by responding to the call of a caller and those, it is uh, for those people who are um, who are told that you who have faith, this is as if they they have uh, just woken up in a, in a, a from sleep or from a, from a very in a hazy then a hazy state of mind and then afterwards it becomes their faith becomes clearer and clearer and even if someone who is um, a good person and who who has uh, who uh, lo looks at the universe with love he cannot attain that um, that uh, greatness that is granted when one obeys response to the caller is saying that one does not then think as to where this caller is calling us if you just said munadiyan then everybody would have thought that it is the caller is calling towards the love of allah towards the remembrance of allah and towards the true intelligence therefore those matters even though they are they may be true in their own self but it doesn't seem to be the um, the the reason for these verses, the, the, the actual reason, this uh, um, core of this verse is that all of these people are a, a slave to that faith which can only, which only uh, can be attained through following a, um, a, a caller. Huzur is given a verse of the Holy Quran that if if uh, one cannot see a good a, a, a beloved. How can one believe it? And even if, even if uh, we doesn't, one does not see the beloved, at least one can see the um, uh, signs of it. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying that that um, there is, uh, there may be an indication, a few indications of the beloved, but when one actually attains the beloved, that is something else. So this is to, uh, to to take the caller call, takes one towards the greatness of faith, and then it says that those people who have responded to the call of um, that person, and he they do not have uh, be arrogant and say that we have already believed, and they they do not say that we are, we we remember Allah while we are sitting standing laying down. Why should we respond to this call? Those people who bow their heads and they know that this is a greater faith then a certain kind of um, a treatment is meted out to them and we were saying that there is an incident of the promised Islam which applies to this perfectly that a person who was um, a, 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 a like a beggar and um, at the Darwish he had come from far away and he came to the mosque and immediately after uh, prayer, he said to the Prophet Islam, they take my bath, accept my bath, and he did accept his bath. And then he's went, he, the Prophet Islam went, and he was he was going to return, and a companion said to him that what is uh, what is your uh, state of affairs? You should sit down. You should 
um, take advantage of um, the Prophet Islam's closeness and and the uh, he the that person said that I have already reached there, and he said that if you had already reached there, then why did you come? He said that I didn't come of my own accord. I was I was um, I was beaten, and I was told that go and um, do bad, otherwise I will not give you my nearness. That is, Allah gave him the uh, message. So when the caller comes, then they have to go and um, be, obey the respond to the call of the the caller so allah he was although he was um, he had reached that state but allah told him uh, allah did not let him become arrogant and allah told him that he should go and perform bath and then he would be regarded as being um, uh, uh, having reached allah so this is what it means with these verses that he is going to call otherwise no one will know where the true faith lies so those who are uh, believe who are already believers it is a call to them as well and they are granted and he invites them towards great uh, statuses and it is also a call towards those who are outside of faith so those who believe here it means that they the first belief that some people had was that of a proof because they saw a proof and that is a, a natural belief if you see a fire um, and you say yes I'll call it fire now give me uh, give me money for this now or it is the daytime and you see it and you say yes I believe it I can see that it's the daytime of course they believe it because they've seen it so so the only so the only a small um, uh, blessing that they can get is that they that they shall be saved from the fire of hell but is there anything else just than just mere saving of from fire that to attain those statuses is when you respond to the call of the caller and you respond to the caller when and when you do you realize what the true belief is and how it reaches one and takes one towards the firm belief and you bow your head in the at the time when you are when it is unknown and unseen so the <clears throat> first um, belief was from what you observed and then you believed in what you did not observe so allah says in, when allah says in the holy quran in the beginning of the beginning few verses of surah al-baqarah that they believe in you and these two subjects so saying that first ghaib is mentioned that is unseen is mentioned that they believe in the unseen and then they believe in you so that unseen is is actually to do with the belief in the holy prophet and in the beginning there is a state of uh, un of uh, being unseen they do not recognize the holy prophet properly and neither do they are they aware of the <coughs> greatness um, or such things which are um, revealed through uh, prophets, prophets, and prophethood, and so for that there is a reward as well. Uh, the Prophet has written on this much. He says that uh, when you believe in the unseen, that is when it is it is uh, deserving of a reward. But when the commentator said that there is a reward, then the, pro the response. Uh, of this is given by the Prophet Islam in this sense that the belief in the unseen because that it is not um, due to seeing so therefore there is it, it, it demands a, a reward because there is a piousness in it so those people who say that we have believed um, for this uh, then they said give us something so they there was although they did they, they didn't see but they still believed so here there is a devotion that for the sake of you we have believed in an adam and so careful therefore um, give us then um, reward us and the first reward is that forgive us our sins of what we have committed in the past so this is not to do with the different uh, statuses of uh, sins it means that before faith our life was in a form of extreme transgression we, we committed many uh, sins and if those continue if we're going to carry those with us and it is a great um, it's very it's, it's a lot of pain it's a painful burden so so it is not just a matter of re uh, repentance 
a belief means a revolution and belief means repentance so their first demand or their first um, the first thing that they beg of Allah is that Allah we have come now to you so ignore what is we have done in the past and Allah has taught us the prayer himself then that then the next then, then you should also listen to the next thing women say malena that you have okay you've been forgiven from the previous uh, faults but the, those um, uh, habits that you have um, you have got with you you have you're carrying with you which um, are making you commit mistakes so you cannot get rid of them in one day so you should pray that those old um, weaknesses which resulted in uh, in sins if the sins are forgiven and the paths of sin are still open, then we cannot be, we cannot attain salvation. So now, please remove our sins. Start to remove our sins, so because uh, sins cannot be removed suddenly, until the uh, the time of one's death, the after the faith, the, the state of reformation that is that is starts, the seri- the a whole a system of reformation that starts that is what is mentioned is here that oh Allah remove our evils and the believers know that it is impossible that a man who is lower than the Prophet he can be completely free of all kinds of sins so the the beg, one begs to Allah that each of our coming um, a status a state should be better than our previous states and the sins have to be should be removed from us and you are going to uh, make cause us to die and you are the ones who you are the one who is going to make the decision it is not up to us so but at least give us so much t- lifespan that our evils should be removed in such a way that our uh, actions should be like those who are the pious people and they should be we should be we should be enabled to perform such good acts so that due to our um, uh, change in our in our um, manners and our actions and because of the removing of our sins and you should count us among the good people those who are abrar whose whose um, weak weaknesses whose goodness have have uh, vic- been victorious over their weaknesses Rest with you tomorrow, inshallah, as I said. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.